Today we're going to discuss wireless technology. We'll cover different kinds of trending wireless technology, including Zigbee, RF, cellular, Wi-Fi, and infrared technology. We'll also go over how to connect wireless products from SCADA software. If you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat box or the question box. IACB Dash was established in 1993. Our headquarters is in Sinchu, Taiwan. Um, ICB DAS USA was launched in 2001 to support North and South American markets. We have over 200 R&D engineers. We work closely with them to support our customers, to develop new products, and to add new features to our current products. Most of our products are ROS compliant, which means they are lead free. We also have our ISO 9001 certification, which ensures we meet product statutory and regulatory requirements. All right. Wireless communication refers to the process of data communication between two points that are not physically connected by any wires. The most common form of wireless technology uses radio, for example, cell phones, personal data, as a digital assistance, PDAs, uh, GPS, satellite, television, and wireless networking are all based on radio waves. So wireless technology is often applied in long distance applications where it is impractical or impossible to connect them with a wire. So industrial wireless is trending now. ICP DAS USA offers robust industrial wireless solutions for today's industrial control market. Our products are designed with various types of wireless communication technology, including Zigbee, uh, wireless technology, infrared wireless technology, and radio frequency Wi-Fi technology. Uh, we carry GPS receivers, industrial cellular routers and modems. Uh, we have RF devices, Zigbee wireless hardware, SMS controllers, um, GPRS data servers, and more. From simple point-to-point -point installations to complex wireless data acquisition networks, we are capable of meeting any of your industrial wireless communication needs. So make sure you hashtag Zigbee ICP throughout uh, this portion of the presentation. The industrial wireless communication opens many new possibilities for highly flexible and efficient um, automation solutions. They are suitable for indoor and outdoor use. Uh, we used the in the fields of remote control and remote maintenance, they bring outstanding benefits. Uh, Zigbee is a specification based on the IEE 802.15.4 standard for wireless personal area networks. Zigbee lets you easily and cost-effectively add intelligent new features that improve the efficiency, safety, security, and reliability and convenience of your products. So you can help your customers save both energy and money or give them the tools they need to gain control of their homes. It's even possible to help people maintain their independence and allow them to closely monitor their health and fitness. Zigbee operates in the ISM radio bands, and it defines a general purpose, an expensive, self-organizing uh, mesh network for ind industrial controls. It can be used in a wide variety of applications, ranging from building automation. Um, it can be used in, um, like Zigbee wireless technology, can also be helped with embedded sensing, uh, data collection, smoke, and intruder warning, uh, remote control, et cetera, et cetera, you can name it. And Modbus is a serial-based communications protocol. Both Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU protocols are widely used uh, industrial communications for instrumentation, control, and data acquisition devices. Just a quick fact, Modbus was originally published by Modicon, uh, now Schneider Electric, in 1979 for the use with its programmable logic controllers, the PLCs. And data acquisition is the process of sampling real-world physical information and converting the samples into digital numeric values that computers and controllers understand. Modbus-based data acquisition devices, including RTD, thermistor, thermocouple, voltage, current, strain gauge, counter, frequency, relay, digital input, and digital output, et cetera, et cetera, these are widely used in industrial automation, remote monitoring, wastewater monitoring, 
process control, and building automation. With data acquisition systems like this in the image, uh, fans can be automatically turned on or off based on the temperature, the conditions. Zigbee products uh, can work with Modbus-based data acquisition products to make Zigbee I.O. pairing applications where the input of a Zigbee product can wirelessly trigger the output of another module. So the, the ZT2052 IOP module acts as a Zigbee controller that provides a eight-channel digital input pair connection function with the module ZT2042. Um, and an embedded I.O. channel binding function means there is no need for an external controller. It features ISM 2.4 gigahertz operating frequency, a wireless transmission range up to 700 meters, and it is fully compliant with the 2.4 uh, GIE. The ZT2052 uh, IOP also provides external DIP and rotary switches for easy configuration which can be used to synchronize the digital signals in any environment where wiring is difficult. Right, the ZT2052 IOP here is a Zigbee Alliance-based digital input module that can be configured to trigger relay and digital outputs from the ZT2042 Zigbee wireless uh, data acquisition module. The ZT2052 IOP features embedded IO pairing functions, so there's no need for users to use an external controller. And the status of each ZT2052 IOP channel triggers the corresponding remote digital output channels on the um, ZT2042 module. Um, the ZT2052 IOP constantly sends status updates of the digital input channels to the remote ZT2042 to ensure that the digital output channels are synchronized. It also comes with external DIP and rotary switches for easy configuration, as I mentioned. And the ZT2042 offers uh, four PhotoMOS relay output channels and four sync type digital output channels with short circuit protection. Each channel features photo couple isolation. Uh, the ZT2042 has eight LED indicators to display the uh, digital output channel status. Um, and users can easily configure the module address, protocol, checksum, uh, ZTPID, and ZT channel settings using a combination of rotary and DIP switches. Okay, so ZT2042 can be used in many applications, such as building automation, factory automation, machine automation, remote maintenance, remote diagnosis, and testing equipment. It can be connected with alarms, locks, smoke detectors, and other sensors for security alarm systems. It can also interact with other Zigbee wireless data acquisition modules, like the ZT2570 or the ZT2550 for a wireless remote monitoring system. There are three different types of Zigbee wireless devices in a Zigbee network, um, master, router, repeater, and end device. We have Zigbee wireless converters, uh, repeaters, and Zigbee data acquisition I.O. modules. For Zigbee data acquisition I.O. products, um, they can be used with our free easy data logger software as well as um, many types of SCADA software. Again, our ZT products meet the Zigbee Alliance standard to ensure maximum compatibility uh, with Zigbee products. And Zigbee Alliance-based wireless converters and data acquisition modules are being used in factory automation systems um, for system status, wireless communication, monitoring, and data acquisition. A, ZD, a ZT2570 host repeater is connected to a laptop computer which runs Indusoft SCADA software. It communicates wirelessly over the Zigbee network to ZT2571 slave converters which are connected to the VPD-133 um, touchscreen PLC that operates use to input data. Um, and then the ZT2060 digital input and the relay output and ZT2053 digital input modules are also in the network for data acquisition. Another ZT2571 slave converter is connected to serial IO modules and racks for data acquisition. 
all the data is gathered on the laptop running SCADA software where users can see the status of the entire factory, generate reports, log data, and then review alarms and trend reports. All right, so just a quick round of hands. Raise your hand if you think you can use um, Zigbee products in your applications. Great. I'm seeing some hands there. Thank you. All right, so let's uh, move on to RF technology. So the radio frequency technology is referred to as a wireless electromagnetic um, signal for data communication. It can operate in the 900 megahertz frequency. It supports point-to-point -point or uh, multi-point topologies. RF technology can be used in applications like cell phones, robotics, and automation projects. And the SST900B, for example, has 16 adjustable RF channels and different AP modes like slave P2P and slave broadcast. Um, radio frequency technology supports peer-to-peer -peer or broadcast communication modes. So the SST900B's RF network is configurable with a software utility which lets you configure an RF channel group ID, AP mode, uh, data format, and baud rate. SST900B um, has an internal self-tuner, and its typical wireless transmission range is um, 1,000 meters. So here's a diagram that shows how the SST900B works in an application. It can connect to a PC via, via RS-232 um, on one side, and on the other side connect with a program programmable automation controllers, uh, remote I.O. data acquisition modules, etc. Uh, different SST modules can talk with each other wirelessly as well. So let's talk about cellular technology and make sure to hashtag uh, cellular ICP in this section of the presentation. All right, so cellular technology is widely used um, it's a widely used wireless technology. The most common example is a mobile phone network. So the GT543GWA is a cellular wireless controller that can work with the 3G network. We actually partner with AT&T so that you can get a data plan through their network for your wireless system. With the GT543GWA um, placed in your vehicles, it can help track the vehicles and allow the control center to view where they are in real time and generate comprehensive reports um, on that. The GT540 cellular, um, cellular wireless controller can be used in various remote monitoring and control applications. For example, in one of our projects, we helped a customer monitor the ozone level in rivers across the world. Our GT540 controller helped send the ozone level data measured from the liquid meter and thermal couple meter for, uh, via GPRS to the control center by SMS, text, and emails. And then in this diagram, um, another application uh, was on vending machine where the GT540 helped monitor the in inventory of the vending machine and send SMS text messages to the users when the inventory goes low to ensure everything's in stock. We helped the customer set up a water refilling station automation system um, nowadays. People are always searching for a reliable, clean water for daily use. This basic requirement results in great number of demand for water refilling stations. Um, in order to effectively monitor the, and manage the equipment, the station manager adopts um, a, a GT540P to the machine's operations. The GT540P not only has a burglar-proof system, but it's also equi equipped with a counter function to help the manager understand their daily business volume and transactions precisely by SMS. The GT540 now immediately and automatically report to the manager when uh, when and where some accidents happen by SMS as well. It definitely um, is a wonderful solution for saving labor forces by utilizing smart controls for more and more water refilling stations and other vending machines. And then here's another application we helped with. Uh, one of our customers um, is a major cryogenic uh, liquefied gas supplier in Romania um, and has storage tanks installed um, at their customers' premises all over the country. 
The supplier wants to be able to see their real-time inventory in their tanks in order to improve the supply chain, so data is expected to be transmitted via GPRS network. In addition, SMS alarms are required to be sent out when a malfunction occurs. The cryogenic liquefied gases are stored in special pressurized storage tanks at very low temperatures, down to a minus 180 Celsius. Um, such liquefied nitrogen, such as liquefied nitrogen, oxygen, argon, etc. So tank content measurement is made by a specially calibrated differential pressure transmitted with. 4 to 20 milliamps output signals, which will be connected with the analog input of the M2M controller. Now we're going to go over some Wi-Fi technology and make sure you hashtag Wi-Fi ICP on Twitter. So Wi-Fi data acquisition modules make an easy way to incorporate wireless connectivity into monitoring and control systems. They also support Modbus TCP and UDP protocols in the network encryption configurations, which makes perfect integration to SCADA software and offer easy and safe access for users from any time and anywhere. Our I.O. products can be used with our free easy data logger software. And we're actually going to talk about infrared technology. Make sure you hashtag infrared ICP. So infrared technology um, uses electromagnetic radiation. So the IR210 is a universal learning remote module that can learn up to 176 IR commands and save them to a file. It operates in the 32 to 56 uh, kilohertz frequency. The IR210 has an RS-232 port and an RS-485 port, so it can allow Modbus RTU-based master devices to communicate with our um, IR slave devices like televisions, projectors, and lighting controls. The IR210 is set up with a software utility which lets you configure baud rate, net ID, device name, and commands. The typical communication distance between the IR210 IR um, and end devices like digital picture frames is up to 7 meters. All right, so let's talk about SCADA software. So there's two hashtags for this, the SCADA, hashtag SCADA ICP and hashtag easy data logger. So um, SCADA is supervisory control and data acquisition. It's a system operating with coded signals over communication channels to provide control of uh, remote equipment using typically one communication channel per remote station. It's basically the graphical interface for um, data, uh, data acquisition. We offer Indusoft, KingView, KingSCADA, KingHistorian, and of course our free easy data logger. I would recommend using our free easy data logger, and if not, um, Indusoft works very well too. So let's talk a little bit about um, Easy Data Logger. So Easy Data Logger is a software ICP DAS provides for users to build a SCADA system. There's some features like um, high and low alarms, real-time data trends. Um, it comes with IP camera viewers. Uh, you can have a flexible work group configuration, um, and it has a control logic, which you can use Visual Basic Script for. And then Indusoft um, can be used with wireless technology for more advanced remote monitoring applications that mainly to support multiple users, generate reports, um, usages, and animated graphics. So the, the SCADA software offers web publishing capabilities used for remote access through a web browser. Different users of the SCADA software can have different permissions and can also have access to different areas of the system. So this SCADA software can generate also customized reports as well as the easy data logger. So now I'm going to pass the um, presentation over to Robert. He's going to show you how to connect the SCADA software with one of our wireless modules. Okay, thank you, Lucy. Um, let's see, this here is Indusoft uh, Web Studio, which is uh, widely used in the industry for many uh, wireless applications as well as uh, non-wireless applications. Uh, some of the protocols it communicates are Modbus TCP, Modbus RTU, um, let's see, OPC, and you can connect many, many different cellular devices to one instance of Indusoft, or you can network many computers running Indusoft to provide a nice graphical interface 
and some screens to show you the uh, values and show a real life uh, simulation of your application. Uh, right here, this is a wind energy demo. <clears throat> this one just simply shows the status of windmills in a wind farm. Um, imagine using wireless technology for this. Uh, depending on the space between the wind towers, you can use RF, Zigbee, or Wi-Fi technology. If the distance is even greater, you can use cellular communication to combine all of these wind windmill statuses into one SCADA project. <clears throat> um, let's see, next for an automotive or robotic application in a factory uh, where wires could be a problem, you could use wireless technology like RF, Wi-Fi, or Zigbee and uh, show the status of the production line, the robots in the production line, or the vehicles themselves. <clears throat> in the food and beverage industry, you can uh, show the status of the various uh, conveyors in your application, uh, the uh, filling and uh, emptying of bottles, as well as the cleaning of bottles. Um, let's see, in wastewater application, <clears throat> throughout the process, it's a very wide application usually in which uh, sensors and uh, flow meters are dispersed uh, over a wide range. You can use wireless technology in those applications as well to pass the data back to a computer for data logging, alarms, trending, or reporting. Um, let's see, and some of the features of Indusoft <coughs> are animation, color changes, uh, graphics, uh, the graphics library in Indusoft is quite extensive. Uh, there are many application-related graphics as well as additional graphics that you can create yourself. <clears throat> um, some of the active objects that you can use are combo boxes, check boxes, list boxes, but the idea is to use these objects to create a nice graphical interface where you can view and monitor your application. Recipes are used for uh, repetitive app, uh, portions of your program in which you need to, say, display the recipe of you know, how to make a, a soda or a beverage or a cake on the screen. You can create those uh, for reports. You can generate reports and pass them through cellular, <coughs> uh, cellular connection to remote uh, recipients. You can email them. You can uh, FTP. Uh, many ways different uh, to pass reports on. Uh, for trending, this is one of the most important uh, aspects of SCADA is that you can view the status of, say, temperatures, uh, wind, wind farms, levels, and just view them nicely on a graph. If something you know suddenly spikes up, you know it'll alert the user or the uh, person in charge of monitoring that uh, the level is you know, spiking and must be fixed or monitored or checked. <clears throat> alarms. Alarms are generated based on the data passed on from these wireless uh, modules, whether the protocol be Modbus TCP, Modbus RTU, OPC, or any other industry standard uh, protocol. And let's see, from SCADA, you can connect to, you know, our cellular modules using uh, Modbus TCP or OPC connections, uh, RF modules. Uh, it depends what's connected at the other end. For instance, if you had a Modbus R2 device at the other end of your RF connection, you can uh, connect to SCADA using Modbus R2 protocol. Um, see, they, the RF modules are not protocol dependent. They just simply act as if uh, they are wired, but uh, the data is passed through wirelessly. So you would just create your normal connection using Modbus RTU or Modbus CCP or whatever communication method you want. Our Wi-Fi modules, they actually communicate by a Modbus TCP protocol. So if you do uh, have an application where uh, you already have a pre-existing uh, Ethernet network <coughs> and want to connect wirelessly to a, a module, you can simply use one of our wireless uh, modules or Wi-Fi modules and connect by a Modbus TCP. Using Easy Data Logger, you can also connect to uh, these other modules using the same methods. Um, let's see, at the end of this presentation, I'll answer any questions that you have, but I'll pass the presentation back to Lucy right now. 
All right. Thank you, Robert. Uh, that was very interesting. And um, so the wireless communication um, is a process of transferring information um, between two or more points that are not physically connected. So I just want to emphasize the major factor to consider um, is distance and speed when selecting a wireless solution. Okay. All right. So here, um, Zigbee is a self-organizing mesh network. Um, so it communicates through a 2.4 gigahertz network, which is the same as Wi-Fi. It goes up to 700 meters, and is good for slow communication and small communication because uh, it's low data intensity. Um, it does require a master-slave device, so it needs a host. And then Wi-Fi communicates over 2.4 gigahertz network, and it communicates up to 100 meters. And then cellular technology, um, like the GTM, GT, GPRS, um, it uses a 2, 2G and 3G um, uh, network, but the 2G is actually going to be phased out. The benefit of cellular technology, it goes long distances, like across the world. Um, and there are other ones that we discussed today are like the RF modem, infrared, which is good for short distances like your TV remote. Um, but we also have antennas to extend signal for uh, many of our modules um, for the Zigbee and the Wi-Fi, uh, et cetera. So why, IC, uh, why should you choose ICP as USA? Some of our company benefits include customized products and OEM capabilities. We have very low lead times, and uh, we definitely give you that personalized care. We provide industrial products at a competitive price, and we keep up with the latest technology. We offer free technical support and offer a wide variety of modular solutions that meet many different kinds of application requirements. So at this time, um, please feel free to ask any questions you may have. Also, um, please follow us on our social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, just to keep, uh, so make sure you're updated with our latest automation technology. Um, our, our information is right here on the screen here, and uh, we will also be sending out a follow-up email um, with the recording of this webinar so you can share with your colleagues or just to review the information. So are there any questions so far? OK, it looks like uh, you don't have any questions yet, other than maybe some technical um, questions about the webinar itself. Um, so just please email us later on or contact us um, if you have any questions that you think of. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And thank you for attending our webinar.